Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about transformations and explain how it often comes down to slope. I'm going to be looking at translations, reflections, rotations, and dilations. I'm going to start with translation. Here I'm using GeoGebra and I have the point A here and I have vector V which goes from 0, 0 to 3, 1. And I'm going to be translating point A using vector V. So here's point A and here's my vector and I get A prime which is here. The key is that this is to the right three and up one, to the right three and up one. Maybe for emphasis, I'll show the triangle here. So, you want to visualize this triangle starting at point A, coming to the right three, and going up one. I think I'm going to take point A prime now, and I'm going to translate it again. And I get point A double prime. Again, three to the right and up one. If I would change my vector here, Let's see if I can change my vector. Now I've changed my vector. The vector goes to the right three and down one. So A is here. This has a slope of negative one third. Rise over run is negative one third. And then A prime comes down here to A double prime to the right three and down one. Now let's go to reflection. Before we do reflection, we want to make sure that we understand what a slope of 1 and a slope of negative 1 means. This line right here, line AB, has a slope of 1. Rise over run is 1 over 1 or 2 over 2. The fraction is 1, and it's on a 45-degree angle. A slope of negative 1 to the right 1 and down 1 has a 45 degree angle going down and to the right. These are very important slopes. Okay, now we're ready to do reflection. I have point A and I'm going to be reflecting across this purple line. And so let's go ahead and do that. The key here is that you go from your point A perpendicular to the line, in this case three steps, and then you continue in the same direction three more. Now let's take a look if what would happen if my line of reflection was on a 45 degree angle here. Notice that I go from point A perpendicular to the line. Since the line has slope positive 1, a perpendicular is going to have a slope of negative 1. So I come across the diagonal of the graph paper, kind of one square, and then to here. On the other hand, if point A was here, I would have to go two full diagonals to get to the line, and then two more diagonals. And let's look at this one here. Now, the perpendicular line coming up here, perpendicular to the purple line, is one full diagonal, another full diagonal, and a half diagonal, two and a half diagonals. And I continue half diagonal, full diagonal, full diagonal. Finally, let's put a slope here of um, negative one, perhaps. And we can see here that this diagonal coming down here perpendicular 
A coming to the line is one and a half diagonals, and then we have one and a half more diagonals to get to A prime. Now we're ready to go to rotations. Okay, in this particular one, I have a point A, and I have my center of rotation right here, point O, and I'm gonna rotate 180 degrees. 180 degrees is going to take point A to O, and then it's gonna continue the same distance beyond. This actually can be considered reflection through a point. So let's do that rotation. We're going to rotate around a point. This is the point I'm rotating. This is my center of rotation and I'm rotating 180 degrees. And I have my point A prime down here. How is slope manifested here? To get from A to O, I'm gonna come down one, two, three, four, and to the left two. And I'm gonna continue in the same motion, down four and to the left, three. Let's see what would happen if point O was moved here. Let's say point O was, let's see if I can get O to move here. I'm having a hard time getting O to move. Okay, I was able to get O to move here, and I've also moved A. If I'm gonna rotate this 180 degrees, A now to get to O is down three, and over one, so I'm going to need to come down three and over one. So let's go ahead and do the rotation of point A through point O of 180 degrees. Here we are. If I move point A, maybe right here. 180 degree rotation, down one over two, down one over two. The even more interesting case though, is going to be rotating through 90 degrees. So let's take point A here and put it right here. And I'm gonna rotate this uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, so. I'm going to get my rotate function, rotate point A around point O. I'm going to go counterclockwise 90 degrees. Now, notice how slope is manifested. To get from A to O, I go down one and over two. But I want a 90 degree angle here. So that means this is going to need to be perpendicular. It's going to be over one and up two. This, this line right here, maybe I'll draw the line in. This line has a slope of one half. This line here, A prime O, should have a slope of negative two. It has a slope of negative two. Let's do another example. This time let's rotate clockwise 90 degrees and I'm gonna rotate around this center point O. To visualize where my point is going to be when I rotate 90 degrees to the right, I think about the slope to get from A to O. I'm gonna come down two and to the right, one, two, three, four. To get the image then, I'm gonna to come to the right two and up four. So let's do that. And I'm going to go 90 degrees clockwise. Slope here is 
negative two fourths, and the slope here is positive four halves. Now let's see how slope is manifested in dilation. Okay, here's my point A, and here's my center of dilation, which is the origin right now. And let's say that my scale factor is going to be three. What this means is I'm gonna come from O out to A, and then I'm gonna triple that. So I'm coming to the left three and up one. I'm gonna to go to the left three and up one a second time, and to the left three and up one a third time to get to my image point. So let's see where dilation is here. I'm gonna dilate point A from a center of O with a scale factor of three. And here's my A prime. Once again, the slope here, to the left three and up one, to the left three and up one, to the left three and up one. The slope of this line here is negative one third. Just for experimentation here, I might move point A over here, and now the slope here is one half. Here, the slope is one and so on. Of course, we can have a scale factor that's fractional. So let's take a look at that. Now what I'd like to do is dilate this point A with a center of O with a factor of one third. It's still gonna be on this straight line. It's still gonna have a slope of one third, but it's going, the distance is gonna be cut in three parts here. So let's dilate point A with a center of O, and my factor is going to be one third. And so this point, which GeoGebra happens to be calling A, A1 prime at the moment here, you might think about what the ordered pair is for this. The X value here for A was three, one third of three is one, the x value of, I'm sorry, the y value of a was one, and so the y value of this should be one third. And we can check that here uh, by going to the properties and displaying the value. Now let's move our center of the dilation away from the origin. Now I have point A here and point O here. And let's say I want to dilate this with a scale factor of two. So I'm imagining the ray from O to A, and I always wanna pay attention to the slope. The slope here is negative two thirds, rise over run is negative two thirds, and I'm going to continue down to here. This is where my image point should be. Let's check that. Oops, that was translate, sorry about that. I want dilate. Here's my center point, here's my point. Oops, I, I did that wrong, I'm sorry. Let me try that again. I'm supposed to select my object first and my center point second, and then my scale factor. Here's point A prime. Once again, down two over three. So it doesn't matter if we're doing translation, reflection, rotation, or dilation. It oftentimes comes down to slope, and slope is manifested in all of the transformations. Have a great day. <music>